Alex Williamson here with the secret history living inside your aquarium. I have moved things around in this tank. I took the sticks out. Uh, I thought I wanted them in there for the tannins, but really, I don't know. It just made the tank look cluttered and so forth. But I just wanted to show you a little tip. So I got these rocks. Uh, these ones are, uh, these two here are new. And I found them outside. This one's probably some sort of jade or something, like really low grade quartz or jade. And the other one is definitely granite or diorite. <clears throat> um, both are um, safe for the tank, obviously. I wouldn't put them in if they weren't. And this is a lava rock that has the bubbles or holes in it from when it was cooling. And the shrimp love the lava rock. Um, it had been in my 40 gallon bow front. And since it's porous, it had been really growing a lot of algae to the point where it looked green and instead of this grayish bluish color that it naturally is. And the shrimp have, the shrimp and the uh, snails have gone to town on it. So if you're ever trying to clean your hardscape, wood included, or like, you know, I have a breeding box and a thermometer that just had like biofilm and like kind of nasty gunk on them that was... I wasn't a fan of it, so I put it in here, and sure enough, within an hour now of putting this stone here in, and this stone here, which used to be tan and yellow, and it has definite uh, sulfur and calcium in it too, and so hope it's not too high for the fish in the or for the shrimp in the other tank. It hasn't been an issue at all. Um, plus the leaves are in here, so those should be starting to grow beneficial bacteria and fungi soon. I'm seeing a lot of shedded uh, shrimp uh, carapaces or uh, shells, and the pregnant shrimp, uh, our count right now is at least five, probably six. Another one on the look out for, or that we'll keep an eye out for, is this one here. She, uh, I thought was a he, just because she uh, hadn't fattened up around her tail. And it's a little hard to see. Let's see if we can adjust this lighting. Is that any better? So, she has eggs now that have moved from her ovary up into her lower back and she will be moving them down shortly to reproduce um, as the others have. So the little moonlight trick, kind of cool. Um, this, this one is another one that I haven't documented as of yet, but another very probable um, small young shrimp having a bait, having some babies. Um, back here we have a saddle that is growing very very intense on a uh, pretty deep red shrimp compared to the others. You can see the others. Some See here's like the wild type. But that's not even a cherry shrimp anymore. It is a essentially a shrimp you could find in the wild. Whereas back here since I've had them in this tank I've been able to get these shrimp into tip-top shape very quickly. They're so responsive. I mean, they can die easy, but they can brighten up easy. Um, and this one is almost probably uh, fire level, if not maybe even like painted fire, because I can't see a saddle or any organs or anything, plus the legs and everything are jet red. They are super red. And here is the Razorback that's come to feed. She's got um, eggs in her. Uh, she's been kind of cleaning them and juggling them around. And she had like, I want to say a good, oh, a dozen that I could count easily when I'd take a picture and look closely. But now she has substantially less. Uh, maybe we can get a better look from this side. Um, but it looks as though they are turning into shrimplets instead of just eggs. And since she's a razorback, she's got that dark red back, a stripe down the middle of that, 
and then she's also got uh, clear legs, it makes it ironically harder to see what's going on with all the legs and clearness, and and uh, her babies are probably going to be very clear. Um, she's feeding, and I don't see even right now. Early, okay, I do. So here we go. We see one, two, three, four, or five babies left, and I hope that she's not just stressed. Um, a lot of times with shrimp, they'll release cortisol just like a human. They get stressed, and it can cause um, blood flow restrictions and all sorts of things, which can cause them to abort their clutch of eggs. Um, but we'll see. I mean, it's possible that she's let some little teeny uh, shrimplets out into the water already, uh, so I'll be keeping an eye out for that. Still trying to make sure to sex this one. I'm assuming it's a male. It's still very young, um, but it looks like it's going to end up being a male. And uh, I'm going to keep a close eye the next few days and spe specifically a few hours on this female Razor back just because I want to know what the deal is because over here we've got a pregnant shrimp that's mowing down on all the algae on the rock you can see and I bet they'll clean this rock in a day or two it's insane like they just love this they don't want any of the food that uh, I have provided them and that's totally fine I'm not going to give them anything for a while um, and they're just eating this um, combing through it, but she is super pregnant. Her and the Riley are really, um, shrimp are really, really pregnant. Um, looks like maybe we have another Razorback, too. One of the little ones that's growing up has started to show that it's, like, half Riley, half Razorback. Um, but yeah, so hopefully we continue to color up. This rock, like I said, is just, like, feeding mecca at the moment it's hard to see how many are even on here because there's like the blue one and there's there's all sorts of shrimp right now on the back of it and on it and coming and going and they're liking it more than the filter uh it looks like we also have a confirmation of the blue female back there has a full clutch of eggs yep she just moved it so we can see it nicely um Let's see if we can get a little closer and check out her eggs and what they're doing. Pardon the loud noise. So what they're doing is they are fanning those eggs so that uh, bacteria doesn't build up on them and so that uh, beneficial probiotic bacteria and or fungi actually colonizes it first, just like in our stomachs. And then that way, bad bacteria and things won't have a chance to take a foothold and uh, harm the shrimplets that are there since they give birth to live shrimplets. They, I mean, they have eggs. Don't get me wrong. Th these are eggs that she's holding. Um, but they give live birth of those eggs. So kind of an interesting system. And let's see here. Yeah, there we go. So you can see she's got... I mean, too many to count. She looks like it looks like she has more than she can deal with, and that's awesome because even just this morning I was working on another video and I was like, man, I'm gonna have to make a new video because the shrimp are reproducing so fast in this tank. So I'm really excited because she's actually like a decent, a decent blue, and I wasn't sure that she was a she. I do need to do a test and see if these shrimplets will survive in the big tank. So if you might get sacrificed for the sake of finding out if they'll be safe there in the long run. Um, because in the longer tank that has Blue Dream uh, shrimp, I would like to, um, you know, keep maybe like uh, another 10 or 20 shrimp in there just to keep things clean. But I'm really digging this bluish green uh, jadey looking rock. Um, and I think that it, it probably has cobalt or nickel in it or something. But it looks pretty darn cool when the cherries are on it, especially a dark one. And this rock will 
be back to beige soon, I'm sure. This one will be back to pink or brick color soon. And uh, the shrimp seem to have chosen to darken up in this tank with the substrate, making themselves uh, less translucent and more uh, vivid red. And they can't control, like, the color tone necessarily. They're not, like, conscious and, like, I need to be 30% bluer. But they pick either dark or light, and they kind of just go for it. And, um... They, they actively in life camouflage that way and with your substrate you can determine a lot of that but also giving them good food with um, you know omegas and protein and all the things that they need cellulose and um, stuff so they can build their shells and also have uh, their eggs um, growing because you know that's a lot of energy to have eggs growing. The other thing is that the eggs have a nutrients and gas exchange too. They're soft eggs. It's not an impermeable layer. It can let things out and in through a chamber. And so when they fan them like that, they're actually circulating fresh uh, water through osmosis um, one way osmotic um, exchange. And they're, those baby shrimp eggs are getting some nutrients and things so that it's not draining just the mother because they can simply get so much nutrients from the water because they're filter feeders when they grow up anyways. But it does still take a lot of energy from the mother and frequently the mothers die So um, after giving birth. So just wanted to like let you know what's going on here and uh, how everyone got pregnant. I explain in another video how putting the tank out for the full moonlight and then taking it from uh, a colder like 74 and bumping that all the way up to like an 82 within 24 hours and then leveling it back off around 79 and then overfeeding them, putting um, tannins in the water and then letting it be and then killing the speed on the filter has really, uh, it's really replicated the wet season ending and the dry season uh or the, sorry the dry season coming to an end um the water being warm nutrients piling up and uh shrimp getting dense getting together reproducing right before the wet season disperses them again while pu puddles lakes and streams uh reopen and start new pathways and things so all right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're doing well. I hope your fish and your shrimp and your plants and your family and your life are all great. Check me out uh, on Patreon if you're learning stuff and having fun with this channel. If you want to keep it going, keep the lights on, keep the shrimp fed, um, that sort of thing. And there's some great rewards on there. I don't want to peddle that too much, but just thought I'd throw it out there since it's a new thing. Um, thanks for staying tuned, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Take care.